uh, is uh, considered part of the alternative press in American history, which also has a long trajectory throughout American history, from the days of the working men's press in the 1830s to the muckrakers of the late 19th century to, to uh, the new left newspapers of the 1960s and to the progressive bloggers of our era. Uh, there are like two different streams of the American press, and I've been privileged to work with both. There. A, a democracy now reaches a very different audience, a more sort of progressive, educated audience than the Daily News does. Uh, but I think in both I'm trying to serve the purpose of what journalism is supposed to be about, which is to enlighten and inform, uh, and uh, so that we can all act as better citizens. Uh, I'm also a Puerto Rican who has grown up in this country virtually all of my life. Uh, and one of the things that I began to realize in, uh, uh, as I grew into adulthood was that throughout my childhood in the 1950s and 1960s in uh, New York City, our public schools taught me absolutely nothing about the uh, island from which uh, I came, uh, an island that is perhaps the most uh, valuable overseas possession that the United States has ever held in terms of the prosperity and the wealth that has produced for this country. And that likewise for many other young Latinos who have grown up in this country, Mexicans and Salvadorans and Guatemalans and, uh, and Hondurans and Panamanians and Dominicans, very little of their, uh, the contributions of their societies, uh, the advances in science and, uh, and uh, the arts and in business, uh, or their contributions to the prosperity of the United States has really, is known in this country. We didn't learn about it in the schools. What we did learn about, because uh, I'm also acutely aware of the <coughs> critical role that the news media play in shaping the memory bank of any nation, because I spent my entire life working in the media. Uh, newspapers, after all, were often called the first draft of history, uh, at least until uh, the internet, and Twitter, and Facebook, and Instagram turned us all into multimedia cub reporters. Uh, and uh, but those. Uh, News items produced by newspapers and television and radio became the raw material that historians then used to, to shape the books, the history books, that determine how we see the world in which we live. So I became so frustrated uh, a few decades ago by this lack of information about this enormously growing Latino community and the terrible books that existed that I took a, a kind of audacious attempt uh, to embark on my own journey into the historical record and to try to put together uh, a simple explanation of why the hell are there so many Latinos in the United States? What has caused this enormous explosion of the Latino population since <coughs> World War II uh, that is actually transforming the very composition of the nation? Just as Algerians and Tunisians and Moroccans are transforming France, just as Indians and Pakistanis and Jamaicans are transforming England, just as Turks are transforming Germany. Uh, what has caused so many people from these third world countries to come to the West since World War II and actually change the very composition of these nations? Uh, and uh, so that's what I tried to do, uh, and it took me about 10 years, uh, and the book, as uh, Jeff mentioned, came out in 2000. And to my complete surprise, it's become a huge hit. Uh, it's probably the best-selling book, introductory history to Latinos in the country in the last, uh, in the last uh, 15 years. <laughs> two, years ago, about 200 college courses across the country as an introductory uh, text. Uh, and uh, so a few years ago, a group of filmmakers Latino filmmakers from Washington, D.C. came to me and they said, Juan, we love your book so much, we want to try to make a film based on it. And I said, you want to make a film? I'm not sure that it lends itself. It's got a lot of history. It's, you know, it's kind of, it's not exactly an exciting uh, uh, subject matter in, uh, in terms of the film. But they said, no, no, we think we know how we can do it. And they, uh, interestingly, there were two Latino women Wendy Thompson Marquez, the producer, is an immigrant from Peru who came to the United States as a nanny. Eventually, became a businesswoman, rose up high in the ranks of the Telemundo television network, 
And uh, Eduardo Lopez, a Salvadoran immigrant who came here during the Central American Civil Wars uh, and who became a TV producer himself uh, in Washington. Uh, and uh, they were determined to make this film. They took almost as long to make the movie as I did to write the book. Uh, and, it, and they're two different things. The film is its own artistic project, project and my book is, is, uh, is my artistic project. Uh, and uh, it's, so one is based on the other, but they're not really the same. And I can admit that I sometimes do that. I have some differences with the way the film came out. But overall, I think it, it, it should remain faithful to my central thesis of my book, the title of the book, Harvest of Empire, is that you cannot really understand the Latino presence in America unless you understand our country's relationship to Latin America. Uh, and that, in fact, that the major migrations come precisely from those countries that were most dominated at one point or another by our, uh, our government and, uh, and our businesses. Uh, and uh, so, uh, they made the film, the film has actually, it came out a few years ago, played all around the, in theaters around the country, won a bunch of awards. Uh, and the things that I like to stress most about it, because again, I had no say over the final product, although they interviewed me extensively in the film, is one, that it was produced by Latinos who felt uh, that there was an enormously uh, um, uh, one-sided and prejudiced view of Latino migration in the country that was dominant in the American media. Two, that the two million dollars to make the film was financed largely by wealthy Latinos. Uh, 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 wealthy Latino investors who also were upset back in 2005, 2006, 2007 with the climate in the country. Uh, and three is that they, you'll see, they managed, they spent about $200,000 in the archival footage that they use in the film. But they, they compiled archival footage from all over Latin America, some of which has never been seen in the United States. In addition to some very good journalistic production that was done in this country uh, decades ago, before we got the kind of uh, uh, instant coffee news that we have today. Uh, and uh, uh, so that you will, uh, you, I think you'll appreciate the archival footage in it. So um, uh, I think that that's, those are the key lessons that I think are most important to take away from the film. Uh, 